Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy and thank you so much for joining me for it. And thank you especially to the patrons who make this possible for you every single day with their support at patreon.com slash sw7x7. Alright, so this is our deep dive episode related to Devoted, which is the first of the Beresafi episodes in Tales of the Empire. And it occurred to me that, yeah, Beres actually doesn't appear in a lot of Star Wars stories telling and she was actually scheduled to meet her destiny as it were by the end of the story arc that she last appeared in but Dave Filoni stepped in said ah, I got plans for Barris," and so ultimately she did not die in the Clone Wars and so yeah we're gonna talk about the two Clone Wars arcs that she appears in and get that background information for the character that we then meet in Devoted and that we're going to see in the other two tales of, of tales of the Empire episodes. So the first of the story arcs is in season two of the Clone Wars, and it's a five episode arc which involves an attack on Geonosis and the capture of Poggle the Lesser. And Barris appears in the last three episodes of this story arc along with her master Luminara Unduli. So the first episode is the Weapons Factory episode, and they are responsible Barris and Ahsoka are for infiltrating a Geonosian weapons factory while Anakin and Luminara are leading an assault on the front of the Geonosian facility. So it's supposed to be sabotage from below and it doesn't quite work out the way that anyone would expect naturally. In particular with Ahsoka and Barris, what happens is, is the Geonosians catch wind of Ahsoka and Barris sneaking in and putting explosives explosives on the weapons factory uh, reactor and so ultimately Ahsoka gets knocked unconscious and Barris has to make a decision to either save Ahsoka or make sure that the place gets bombed and she saves Ahsoka and that one good turn will earn another because we find out in subsequent episodes that there's a whole thing about a Geonosian brain worm that is controlling people and making them do terrible things and Barris herself gets infected by one of these brain worms and at the end or at the climax of a story in which they're trapped on a ship, a medical supply ship with a bunch of clones who have also been infected by various brain worms. Barris basically begs Ahsoka to kill her in order to prevent the brain worm situation from spreading. But Ahsoka does not, so there is the kindness being returned basically, and ultimately they're able to freeze out the brain worms, so all's well that ends well. And there's one particularly interesting thing that that happens in the epilogue of that Brain Invaders episode where Ahsoka wonders if she did the right thing not killing Barris when Barris was begging her to do so because if things had gone wrong and they hadn't figured out that they could freeze the coolant system, use the coolant systems in the ship to freeze everything and then make the brain worms die, that they could have infected a station and the outbreak would have been terrible. And ultimately Anakin says, no, you did the right thing. You were trying to save her. So that makes Ahsoka and Barriss even. And so then we get to the four episode arc that closes out season five of the Clone Wars, which actually at one point was going to be the series finale of the Clone Wars for that matter. Those are all the ones with the Hitchcock style titles, Sabotage, The Jedi Who Knew Too Much to Catch a Jedi and the Wrong Jedi. And in that arc, there is a bombing at the Jedi Temple. There have been protests about the Jedi and their involvement in the Clone Wars. And Ahsoka gets framed for the explosion, for causing the explosion is cast out of the Jedi Order, is put on trial by the Republic, and Governor Tarkin, Admiral Tarkin, now wants the death penalty for her. It takes some investigative work by Anakin and a little help from Asajj Ventress to find out that Barriss Offee is actually the person who committed the bombing. And in a very impassioned speech, she says that she has come to realize what many in the Republic have come to realize, that the Jedi are responsible for the war and that just, you know, by the sheer nature of their participation in it, they've actually become the villains in the conflict. 
She says that it's all of the Jedi that should be on trial and calls her attack on the Jedi Temple an attack on what the Jedi have become, which is an army fighting for the dark side. So this ends up giving us a lot of fodder to consider because her whole justification was that she was trying to attack the dark side and she ultimately becomes a warrior for the dark side of the Force and Tales of the Empire. At least that's where the things are at with the results of the Devoted episode. But she's already under the sway of the dark side herself. I mean, there's this uh, woman, Letty, who was being investigated for the Jedi Temple bombing, and Ahsoka went to talk to her, and Barriss force-choked her to death, made it look like Ahsoka was the one doing that, so that was how Ahsoka got framed. Or at least that was part of the framing. But that force choking, I mean, we generally associate that with the dark side of the force person. And so, yeah, she was already kind of flirting with that direction anyway. And then, of course, to see her using the force choke in Tales of the Empire in that first episode, well, yeah, she was already versed in it. And the other thing I wonder, too, is whether Tarkin sought the death penalty for Barriss Afi as well as for Ahsoka, and it just you know, turned out that he wasn't able to get it, that she was sentenced to life in prison instead, Barriss was, or if the charges were you know, moved down and there was something additionally wrong with what Tarkin was doing, if he was being you know, really a jerk going after Ahsoka by calling for the death penalty on her. Although I think, you know, the more I sit with it, the more I think he probably asked for the death penalty for Barris too. And the other unanswered question at this point, and maybe there isn't necessarily an answer, maybe Barris came to this realization or this belief on her own. But is it possible that she was radicalized in any way by anybody else that we don't know about just yet? Maybe someday we'll have the answer to that question. But then again, that's also one where if we don't get it, you know, we would probably be fine with that as well. So that's what I've got for you in our deep dive episode related to Devoted, which is the first of the Barris Offy episodes in Tales of the Empire. And that is going to do it for this episode of the podcast. If you enjoy this daily dose of Star Wars joy, please help me get it out to more people. And you can do that really easily and quickly with a rating or review, if you haven't done that already on your favorite app, by just telling people in real life or online and by hitting subscribe and like and comment and follow and join buttons or even leaving comments if you're finding this really awesome and you can even help me make this on a daily basis you can help support the creation and production of this daily dose of star wars joy and you can learn more about that at patreon.com slash sw7x7 every little bit helps and it just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for this episode as always and may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be by seven is not endorsed or sponsored yet by lucasfilm limited disney or 20th century fox and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only star wars the star wars logo all names and pictures of star wars characters vehicles and any other star wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of lucasfilm limited by their respective trademark and copyright holders may the force be with them all original content is copyrighted by star wars 7x7 we hope you love it